you have to flip the camera yes now you can move uh, put no uh, put it like this yeah. okay we're going live now on the facebook uh, i'm sorry we had some uh, disruptions uh, from the live uh, from the computer so uh, we decided to go live from the phone so we hope you see us better and uh, this is raj raj came over to me this week and he tells me oh see let's make a live let's bring some information for the people let's make them strong what can we do so we sat down a couple hours together together and we were thinking what will be the best idea so we're going to speak about the services that you can get with a karen and raj has great ideas raj is a caregiver in israel for over 10 years yes and uh, and he has he's hosting this group indian caregivers he's an artist he made a beautiful movie about caregivers if you want you can call him and find out and send him messages and he can discuss with you he loves the people he helps the people so much and i've seen him so much and i chose him as a brother to be a good friend he sends me so many people to get advice and we try to give them the best information possible i'm not a lawyer I have four lawyers on a team that work outside and they give us the services to our people. So we're doing a great job giving service over here and people are becoming very, very happy. I appreciate all the people that join. Raj is gonna take the show and we will sit together. We have a lawyer online that's watching us and uh, her name is Dana Levinson. She's a lawyer in the team that uh, help us giving uh, support to the people. So uh, we will let, uh, if we have any questions, she will give us some answers also to the people because it's better when you get an answer from a lawyer. And when people come to me and they tell me, Yossi, I have a problem with this and this, I say, one second, let's contact the lawyer, let's ask them and we'll give you the correct answer. This is why we're here, to give you service, to make you strong, to see that you get the correct answer because this is what you need to know. And we're gonna talk about a lot of interesting things. We prepared this, we're ready for this and we're gonna make it good for you. Okay, so friends, all the my caregiver friends, my name is Raj and I'm working in Israel as a caregiver. So I already faced many problems for the calculation from the uh, leave, uh, family or employer release me and uh, calculation, the bonus and the pension, lot of questions. After the finished job, what to do, how to get, uh, how to renew the visa, how to get a new visa, lot of questions. So today we are going to discuss about each and every point. What question I have, I hope uh, you, ha you all of her have a question, many questions. So we will start from the beginning. Uh, you see, uh, the first questions about the calculation, because many people don't know. And uh, you know, time to time, year by year, uh, the government increases the percentage of the salary of the pension, uh, but people don't know how many percent is increased and sometimes what happened the agency stuck on the last uh, increment the percent so they are not making correct calculations or uh, sometimes agency misguide about the calculation sometimes agency take a favor of the employer so they no need to pay more more money so the, there is a, some the solution about the calculation and what to do for the legal calculation end of the work or if someone continue working, so about the bonus, how can how can be calculation? This is a very very big uh, issue with Hakaran, mm -hmm. and we actually, as you know, because uh, you had some experience with yes. us and you took our calculation to other companies that I don't want to say names over here, but the non for profit companies that are very known and they do many calculations for people, mm -hmm. and our calculation was higher. Mm -hmm and our calculation was much more accurate and they told it to you as well. Yes. So, so it's from first hand, you know that you're the testimony to know that the best calculation in Israel today is in Akaren. And the reason is like this. Okay. Because in Akaren, when we came to the market and started doing the calculations, we understand that the people are not getting the correct calculation because the agencies are not in the favorite of the worker. Yes, right. The agencies are favorite in the middle. I don't know why. We know why, but it's not the place to talk about it because we have to talk about positive things and solutions for you. 
and not to talk about agencies, what they don't do and what it's not the, the point right now. The point is right now that we want to explain to you that the best place to get calculation is in a Karen because you will get more money. We calculate it 100% towards the worker. Some agencies, they calculate the computation based on what's for the employer or in the middle, mm -hmm. not here, not there. Okay. They take, they say the law says you can deduct up to 25%. They tell the families deduct 25%. Why? If you can deduct up to 25%, why not deduct 25%? Mm -hmm. But it's not correct. There is a very straight formula of deduction of the pension to the workers. Okay. Deduction from the, I'm sorry, from the salary, from the gross salary, there is a very straight formula. Where do you live? Uh, where where the, the, the employer is, uh, if you live in or you live out? Uh, what uh, area one, area two, area three, if the employer owns the house or if he doesn't own the house, there is many, many things that we need to implement in mm -hmm. that calculation. Mm -hmm. And we do it correctly, 100%. And we lately we see that some agencies are getting our computation. They're telling the workers, this is not correct because it comes out too correct. Mm. So they don't like to feel that they're not doing the good job. But I'm telling you, okay. Hakeren computation is the best computation and the most accurate one for the workers in Israel. This is a fact. And if you got a salary that was below the minimum wage in every area, you can collect retroactive that money. And when we make you the calculation, we put the 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 salary that was given you less we add that in the calculation so sometimes people get another ten thousand five thousand three thousand two thousand depends how much they got basically the calculation of, of a salary in israel after the legal deductions should not be less than forty five hundred shekel four thousand five hundred shekel okay should not be less and if it's less you need to get the money back retroactive okay as per law as per law okay this is one thing mm -hmm. also for shabbat some agencies tell the employers that they need to pay 318 shekel it's mm -hmm. not true mm -hmm. the shabbat is 350 shekel yeah sometimes agency forcing to caregiver yeah no shishi shabbat you will get 300 only or 310 shekel or 320 shekel and get care caregiver have no any option and agency are all not support them. But what I tell everybody, and this is a very good advice and a very smart thing to do. Don't fight with your employer. Okay. Don't fight with your employer. Don't fight with your employer regarding your salary. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you're on a special visa or sometimes you're right before four years and three months. Then mm -hmm. you need to, if you resign or you get fired, you cannot have another job in Israel. Mm -hmm. It will be complicated for you. Don't fight with your employer. Okay. Continue working. Come to us in the end. We will give you the correct computation with they need to add what they need to add over there. Uh, okay. And in the end of the job, you will get the rest of the money that you need to get. So don't worry about that. If you worry and you're really feeling bad, call me. You can call me. We're going to give you the advice what to do. Many people call me and they tell me, Yossi, I'm working very, very hard. I'm working Abba and Ima. Do I need to get more money? Uh, should I stop working? Or this patient is very, very big. Should I ask them more money? What should I do? So, first of all, think about what's the legality of your status in that current position. Okay, got it. Then, after you think about what's your legality status in that current position, then you can start thinking how to, how to approach that situation. Don't resign from your job. Don't make decisions by yourself. Come. We know what to give you a solution. We know how to help you. We know how to bring you to a stage that you really get what you need to get. But it doesn't need to be always that minute. It doesn't need to okay. be always a fight. It doesn't need to be aggravation. Serve your customer. He's your employer. Give him the service he needs to get. Help him. Make him happy. You need something, come to me. Don't fight with them.
it's not worth it, the aggravation in losing a job sometimes could cost you much more than that 200 shekel that you're missing on the salary. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a cleverness that people, friends, all the caregivers don't lose your job if it is your special visa. You can get all of money. What are you, what are you losing? You can come to Yossi, end of the work, and Yossi will help you to get all of your the money. What are you losing during the your job period? Uh, you see, second uh, problem, and many people are uh, also asking, and they are confused. Uh, when they finish the job, and uh, somebody already decide to leave the Israel and go back to his or she's home country, uh, I know the news, and the many people also want to know uh, how to check the amount that agency Bitu Aklumi they are deposit money on the airport. So how can the caregiver will know how much money in the airport and how to get back and what is the procedure? And if someone already leave the country without taking money, how can he get back money? Because his money. This is a very, very good question. And uh, at the Karen, one of our services that we give, we have a list of services that you could see over here. This is a list of all the services we give. We have a little flyer. Uh, we can show it to you. You can always pick it up in the company, in the office when you come. It's called the End Work uh, Deposit Picadon Check and Release. Uh, you need to know on the ongoing how much money do you have in Ben Gurion. And if the money is being uh, put in Ben Gurion, I can tell you a company that I don't mind to say their name. And it could be posted because we know we caught them. Company by the name of uh, Amalu Meever. Many companies, they have many caregivers working there. And this company, we catch them that they did not put the money for one of the workers in the Ben Gurion. And we have a uh, proof. So I'm not even scared to say their name. And we have another two companies that I don't remember their name. And if I would remember it, I will also next live, we will talk about it also. Okay. That the caregiver finished the work. They did not put the money. The money wasn't in Ben Gurion. We made the deposit check. We checked and the money was not in Ben Gurion. And after they know that we checked and we sent them an email the day later, they powered all the money into the account in Ben Gurion. And another company, another girl, that she was actually very sick and her employer died and she needed her money for, uh, for taking care of treatments. She had 16,000 shekel supposed to be in Ben Gurion. We made a deposit check. She came to us. We did not find the money there. We sent a letter to the agency and a day later, 16,000 shekel went into Ben Gurion. Wow. And we have the proof because usually every month they need to send in the five, six hundred, seven hundred shekel, whatever it is, and the money did not go in. Mm -hmm. So we catch her also, that company. I want to tell you something. Also, some companies tell you you registered, but if they don't, uh, they did not register correctly, so the money did not go into Ben Gurion. So when you need to leave, maybe the money is there, but it's not registered correctly. You cannot take the money out. Okay. So there is many issues with the picadon. We see them. We have uh, problems with the picadon check. We know that people are 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 being misled in that direction, and and you need to know when you have an end work calculation being done, make a deposit check. Make sure that the money is there. Make sure that the agency put the money. You can come to Hakaren. We have that service. We know how to do that. Now, if you did not, you were supposed to leave. We have a caregiver that was caught and she was sent to jail. And in the jail, she said, I have money in Ben Gurion before they deported her. They told her, yes, you have, you will get it in the end. They sent her, she did not get the money. Ah, okay. So she sent us an email from Philippines mm -hmm. and we're in the process of getting her that money from the, from the deposit. Wow, it's a big help. It's a very big help. Big help. So friends, even you you leave the country and your money is still in the deposit in the airport. 
So you can contact Hakaren. They will try the best and you will get all of your money in your home country. So no need to fear. But I want to tell you the knowledge is the power. If you have knowledge, you can win the world. So uh, you see uh, another one uh, very important question. Uh, many people finish the job and then they have 19th day, right? To find a new job. But uh, sometimes uh, sometime it's happened that uh, employer not cut the, his name from the computer or sometimes uh, they are not hire a new uh, uh, caregivers. So on that time, uh, the caregiver, how can know uh, from when his 19 day start or when the 19 day finish? How can know exactly the time frame? There is any, any another option to buy online or something? So first of all, it's, uh, it's only it's very difficult mm -hmm. to know exactly. We have also one of these services that we gave at Akaren. It's called the, the, the status check. Okay. Uh, that uh, we send the lawyer to Jerusalem with the power of attorney from the caregiver okay. to say, I would like to have my status check. And, uh, and, uh, and Misra Dapnim tells us exactly when was the day that your visa was cut. Mm -hmm. uh, many caregivers, they go for a vacation. And while they're in vacation, the employer tells them that I hired somebody else. How could you know when is your 90 day start? Yes. How could you know when it's end? When is the period? And if you're in vacation and they cut your visa, it's very, very important that you should come spend. Let's continue. Don't spend time sitting at home because your visa, your time clock for the visa is ticking. It's running. It's running. And when and it's so hard to find the jobs now from you finish the five years and three months for the special visa because so many agencies are telling the employers eh, you don't have a chance with this person to make a special visa. Don't do it. And it's not correct. Okay. But today we're going to speak about that soon. But 90 days, it's only for people from five years and three months until eight years. Ah, okay. People don't know that after eight years, mm -hmm. you have 60 days to find a job. Okay. It's not 90 days. Not, 90 days, not 90 days. So from eight years until 13 years, that is no option anymore. Mm -hmm. You do not have time anymore mm -hmm. to make the visa. Okay. It's very, very important to know that. That's why I'm telling you people, come to get advice. Come to us, talk to us. You want to know exactly when it was cut, if the agency is not helping you, if they're telling you come back next week, come to us. The agency can tell you these answers very quick if they want, but not every time it's their interest to talk about it and right. it's spending time and they're not making enough money. So why help you? You know, so many caregivers are coming to me and tell me, I don't understand when I'm working in the, in the Saba and Safta, I'm a mommy, Kapara <laughs> will help you. Everything is good. When the caregiver, when the, my employer dies, Take you, uh, come back in two months for the calculation. Uh, uh, I cannot help you now. Uh, I, I'm sorry, please go. This is the system in Israel. You know, service in Israel is not something that they believe in. I come from America. America, you get service. I know what means service. I know what means that a person that pays for something, he's supposed to be acknowledged like a person. You know, some people come to me today from a company. I don't want to say their name. He says, I don't understand. I finished working. They give me a computation after one month. They don't even explain it to me. Go to your employer and tell them to pay you this money. What do you mean go to my employer and tell them to pay this money? You're my employer also. Mm -hmm. no problem. You need to sit and explain to me in English. What do I deserve? Why do I deserve this? How do I deserve that? So also with the 90 days, go to your agency and tell them, I want to know when is my 90 day start? You're obligated to tell it to me. And if you don't want to tell it to me, I will come to a Karen. I will tell it to you. I will send the lawyer to, to Jerusalem to check in Mr. Adapnim for you. You'll pay the lawyer fee, whatever the lawyer wants, but it's worth it to you because then you're not wasting time. Then you know what kind of status you can do. Then you know what kind of job you can get after that. This is what's important for you. This is your future. This is your life, your children. 
you need to be focused 100 percent on yourself and this is why we built this company hakaren to help you focus on yourself to help you focus on yourself stay focused you have a great opportunity in life you come to israel it's one of the best places to work in the world in regards of compensation, in regards of labor law, in regards of immigration law, it's one of the best countries in the world. Because the, the in the end, the system, if you follow the rules, it fights for you. The system is good for you, it works for you if you follow the rules. This is what we're here to explain you the rules, to bring you the best information about the rules, and to tell you what's good for you. It's very important to know when your 90 days start and when your 90 days end. And everybody else should know. Yes, this is a more important thing, people, friends, all the caregivers. Sometimes what happened, you have still time and you are afraid that your 90 days are finished. So you have to knowledge when your 90 days start. So you can feel free, you can go outside, you can look another job or you can decide you have to stay in Israel or you have to uh, do something else. So uh, you see uh, another one uh, question also. Uh, when I was an unemployer, when I have no job, on that time always I'm uh, uh, thinking to looking another job and because of the struggle, I'm not eating well, I'm feeling sick. I want to renew my insurance, but I have no knowledge how to renew because my insurance uh my family issue uh by the family so i don't know which company how to call how to pay the money because uh, in israel everywhere is they are using credit card i have no any credit card so there is another uh, any other option that uh, if someone have no job and uh, if someone finish the his insurance medical insurance or he want to renew or uh, he want to issue new insurance uh, you can uh, offer as any service like that? This is uh, one of our services that we offer. Medical insurance is one of the most important obstacles that a person needs to focus on as a caregiver in Israel to worry for himself for medical insurance. Today in Israel, a medical insurance is the basic and the most important thing. You never know when you get sick. You never know what's going on. Every year you need to make a checkup. You need to check yourself, take blood, make sure your sugar is okay. Many people I see, they have sugar problems and they don't have medical insurance and they come, please make me medical insurance. It's the most simple thing to do. You come here, you fill up a form, the next day you have medical insurance. Don't stay one day without medical insurance, even though you feel healthy. You can ride on the bike, fall off the bike, break your foot, and then you need to go to a doctor. And then make medical insurance, and then we can do it quick for you. But that's not the solution. You must maintain your medical insurance in Israel every day. You come to us, we have medical insurance with visa, we have medical insurance without visa. You go to the door across of the office, you pay the fee to the medical insurance direct. We send the papers to the insurance company, Next day by 12 o'clock, you have insurance. Wow. If you come that day before 12 o'clock, you have insurance. This is what we do. And this is a service. This is not something that we even, uh, it's not, there's no profit center of it because you put the money directly into the insurance company. But it's not about that. It's a service that's so must. It's a must. Your health is number one. Don't wait for your medical insurance to stop and then renew it again because if you're sick, and they have the records before, they will not give you a medical insurance again. Yes, it's, it's not only sickness, it's uh, anything happened. It's yeah, security yeah. for yourself. It's security for the, all your body. You are working very hard. Anything can happen. It's a stock or what or doesn't, doesn't matter. Must have a medical insurance if you are working or if you are not working. So people be aware and make sure that you have medical insurance. Uh, you see, now we are going to one more and very, very important questions. Many caregivers live in Israel many years, like 10 years, 13 years, more than 15 years. They have no visa, but they want to stay more. There is uh, any another legal way they can stay in Israel and work again. 
So uh, definitely, there is many issues about this. Okay. And uh, and uh, and I spoke about this in the past, and I speak to people every day regarding this issue. And you need to understand something. Many solutions you can have if you have a medical condition. You can get humanitarian visa. If you have a problem going home and, and you have a scare of something, you can make a request of a refugee visa. But you need to understand something. All these solutions that you may get in Israel, it's solutions that it's not just another paper to fill up. It's not just another lawyer to go to. It's to do it correctly. And this is what I tell people on a daily basis. Do things correctly. How do you do it correctly? You come into an office that's designed and built for you. Hakeren company is designed and built for, it's an information center for you. We can help you with information and we can give you advice from our legal counsel legal attorneys that are helping us to serve these people, to serve you as caregivers. The other day, this lady came in to me and she's bringing me papers. Some of them saw, some of you saw it online and she's bringing me papers and she's telling me, I just went and I made refugee visa. I tell her, why did you make refugee visa? She says, I'm here five years and nine months. And uh, my friend, I was sitting at the door in the Tachana Merkazit, okay. right over here. And this lady came over to me and she told me, why can't you, uh, you cannot make a special visa anymore. It's not possible. All the people that make special visa getting rejected. So she's only 25 days after her employer passed away. And uh, this lady told her, come, I will introduce you to uh, some uh, person over here mm -hmm. in Salami Street. Okay. That he makes the refugee visa for people. Go, let's go to him. He will make you refugee visa. So this guy, he took her to a lawyer. And they charged her money. He takes the money from her. And then he goes to the lawyer and he tells the lawyer, this lady, she wants a special visa, uh, refugee visa. Mm -hmm. And he made a refugee visa. But she has 90 days to make a special visa. Ah, so no need. So to. no need to make refugee wow. visa. Wow, she can work as a legal. She caregiver. can work as a legal caregiver. But wow. once you make refugee visa, you cannot go back and make special visa. So Sri Lankan and Indians and Nepalis that are going to make refugee visa by different lawyers or different people that take you to the lawyer and they come over here and tell you, listen. I know some lawyer, he does it for everybody. You pay only 2,500 shekel and this lawyer will make it for you. 2,500 shekel, it's not even cutting the expenses of the lawyer for going out of his office. But why does he do it? Because these lawyers and these people, they have a template. What does that mean? I already figured everything out. I already, I already too much information is coming to me. So I, I, I know what these people are doing. They're taking, they're, saying for 2,500 shekel, 2,500 shekel, we will make you a refugee visa. They take the same template, they fill in your information, and then they have the same story for everybody or other stories that they use for different people, okay? And they take 15, 20 people, they go to the RSD and they bring them all. 70% of these people being rejected, 80% of being rejected 100%. But then he tells them, you have an option. You can appeal. Give me 5,000 shekel and you will appeal. So look at the price. What's cheap in the beginning turns out to be expensive in the end. Right. And, this is, and another lady came over to me today. Today. She tells me, I went to somebody and he tells me, I have a VIP UN visa. VIP UN visa. <laughs> I'll tell you how to do it VIP. We have a new style. It's called VIP. Okay, what's VIP? You pay VIP. How much you paying? Six thousand five hundred dollars. Wow. Many people are going for this. They're falling for this. They're giving them the money. And he tells them, when you want to exit Israel, we will give you money from the government to exit. 
when you and they'll give you a bonus and they'll buy your ticket and we will guarantee you that you will get a visa to be here a year or two and what happens in the end these people are taking so much money from people for no reason i will tell you something i've seen them all all their all their stories they give people the stories they put them to them in the stories and they put them in you tell the person do you know what you just did no i went to these people they do it for me they know what they're doing i'm telling you what's cheap is expensive and what's too much expensive is a steal and you need to know that you can come to us we know the lawyers they have a fair price they're not too low not too expensive they help you to process the papers into the Misrad Apneem. They will protect you. They will give you all the legal protection that you can get to make the refugee visa. But no monkey business. Yes. So, for, the, so friends, uh, first of all, I want to tell you and uh, tell you that, first of all, check your status, which kind of visa you deserve. If you deserve caregiver visa, why you are going to refugee visa? You, you can get new visa. So first of all, check your legal status in Israel. If you get a new special visa or no. And this is your hard work money. Think twice. If you are giving someone money for a special visa or any other kind of visa, think it twice. Or don't, instead of running to give somebody money, come for a second opinion. You know why? Because money today is blood. You know what I'm saying, blood? You put blood to get that $4,000 or $6,000 to pay somebody for no reason. Come to me. Get my opinion. You go to a doctor. You want to make surgery. God forbid, right? Yeah. You go to another doctor to ask him an opinion. One doctor says like this. The other doctor says like that. Then you have take your mind. Then you use your mind to do the, the correct thing, what's good for you. This is what I'm telling you. I don't tell you use the lawyer that I'm recommending you. I'm not telling you use any other lawyer. But don't use advice that you don't know if the advice is correct. Somebody told you something, no problem. Come to me in a Karen. I'll give you my opinion with my legal counsel that consulting me what to tell you. Okay, because I'm not a lawyer. Okay, they will consult me what to tell you. You can have an appointment with the lawyer that we're, that we're uh, recommending you to go to, they will give you the correct information. And if you're not happy, don't use them. And I will be happy. But do the correct thing for you. Because going to make a, spe a refugee visa when you don't need to make a refugee visa, or paying $6,000 to make a refugee visa when it's much more inflated prices, or paying 2,500 shekel to a lawyer that is using 20 people in the same in the same piece of paper to Misrad Apneem and everybody's being rejected. And tomorrow he's going to come and tell you pay another five, six, seven thousand shekel to, to appeal on that. This is not the right thing to do. Okay? I'm just giving you my opinion. And I'm here to help you and to advise you. It's very, very important to maintain your legal status and to keep yourself legal all the time. And also, one thing that's very important that people don't know, if you have no more legal status, okay, okay, and you have money in Ben Gurion, mm -hmm. after 30 days mm -hmm. that you're not legal, okay, the money starts going down. You're losing a certain percentage of money, and there is a table of, 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 of decreases that every month it goes down until you lose the money. But if you continue to be legal, you make a refugee visa, okay. that money is still there for you. Ah. So people that have refugee visa and worked before as a caregiver, they can still take their money after the refugee visa is over and they need to leave the country. They have money in Ben Gurion. Ah, so mostly people are, don't know about that. They and are, this is a losing, lot of money. They're they are losing, losing the money. They yeah. think. They're, no, they forget about it. Yes. Because there's so much focus on the refugee and the working and the cleaning and all these things <laughs> and to appeal and to go to court and all this. And they forget that they have money in Ben Gurion. As long as you're legal and as long as you're maintaining your legal status, the 10, 15, 20,000 shekel that you have in Ben Gurion is yours. 
And this, nobody's telling it to you because right. we research this and we research everything because we want to make you strong because every question that you ask us and we don't know, it makes us stronger to help you, to help somebody else. That's why I'm saying there's never a stupid question, but there is a person that's stupid that doesn't want to ask the question. Yeah. And I don't want to call anybody stupid because I love you all, but let's be smart and let's ask every question that's possible to ask because asking, it's building your mind. Information is power. power. And this is what we said all the time. Information is power. Okay, Yossi. Uh, I want to ask you one little question. Uh, this is all the what I asked the question about the employment, about the legal visa, caregiver visa, special visa, and uh, second time special visa. Uh, why uh, Bisra Dapnim reject special visa? Everything is okay. Employer is okay. Employer ready to hire the caregiver, but Bisra Dapnim reject. And then Mr. Dapni said, 10 day you have to go and there is no option. So why? what's the main reason why Mr. Dapni reject the visa? Mr. Dapni, since the new law, they're very, very happy to find people and to reject them. This is the new thing. Uh, by the way, I see over here that people say that the lawyers that were that, uh, that are working with uh, a care that were referring to them, they're expensive. And you need to know one thing. I will answer your question, but I want to answer these people, okay? Okay. Cheap is much more expensive. If you pay to a lawyer less than what the fee is, he will be in the end much more expensive. We know the professional lawyers in Israel. We know them. We see their paperwork. We know how much people pay for them. There is a price that a lawyer needs to take for his work. He needs to take that. And if he goes too low, he would never do the work correctly for you. And if he's going too high, so he will not, he will steal your money. But if he's doing reasonable, that will be the real price. And that's when you know that a reasonable price, a guy is doing your work. Too cheap, he's just copy pasting others. Too expensive, he's stealing your money. And in the middle, he's the honest. We are in the middle. So you can tell us, you can tell everybody, whoever you want, you can tell her, Karen uh, refers you to lawyers that are too expensive. It's not true. We did the research. We know what to charge the people. They know what to charge the people and their prices is very, very fair. And I'm telling you, I'm guaranteed. And if you have a doubt about it, come to me, talk to me, show me something else. I love to debating people. I want to see in my face. If I'm wrong, I will fix it because I have no ego. I have the interest of you. And now we'll go back to what you're saying. Over yes, there. sir. Okay. Uh, though, so my question was that uh, uh, many people are rejected by Mr. Dapnim for a special visa. So what's the problem? Why Mr. Dapnim rejects so many cases? Rejected. Caregiver have an employer. Employer have a caregiver. Everything is fine. Everything well and fine. Employer try to go to uh, Jerusalem. But Mr. Dapnim are reject and just give the notice 10 day caregiver have to leave uh, the leave the country. So I'll tell you what it is. Lately, the lawyers that we're working with, they're in court a lot for special visa. Very, very much. We're doing research in the past year. What happened with special visa? We're sending letters to the government to understand we're getting answers and we are debating with the government. The lawyers are debating on a daily basis with the government. We're pulling the information from them to understand. The government is issuing a certain amount of special visa. They're giving a certain amount of, of, uh, of people the special visa. And a big amount they're rejecting. So the agencies are saying, don't even try to go to make special visa mm -hmm. because they will reject you. Okay. And I'm telling you something that's very, very important. There is about a couple thousand people. I don't want to say the exact numbers, but we have the numbers and whoever wants to come, he could come and see it. 
thousands of people every year requesting a special visa. Out of that, 30%, 20% are being accepted. Okay. Seven, 80% are being rejected. 80% of the people that are making special visa requests are being rejected. And why? Because they do it alone or because they do it with the agency, that the agency has no interest in really getting you the special visa. What they do is, and I've seen many people like that, they don't even have a chance to get a special visa. Okay. The agency is going to a family and telling them, I have somebody for you. Mm -hmm. This worker is perfect. They give him to the family. Okay. The family pays the agency 2,000 shekel okay. for the employment mm -hmm. of the worker. And sometimes we've seen today, we caught some employment company that they take from the worker 500 shekel to go work. It's not legal. Wow. They're not allowed to do it, but we're going to figure that out also because we need to help the people. Never pay the agency money for finding you a job. You pay them too much money to come to Israel. But this is another issue. The family is paying 2,000 shekel for the agency to go and get this person. And what the, they tell them, we will do the request for you and Misrael Apnim. Mm -hmm. And this guy, either they don't do it correctly or they don't know exactly what, how to fill up the applications wow. and he is rejected and it takes three months and they guarantee that this worker will be minimum three months for that 2000 shekel and afterwards the families after three months they need to go look for somebody else but 90 percent of the people that come with a lawyer to make a request for special visa just the application to put it correctly in misrad apnim they get the visa and the ones that go with the agency or the employer says, why should I take a lawyer? I have a great case, but he doesn't know how to quote that legality of the case on the paper. Mm -hmm. And he goes to Misrad Apnim and he puts the papers in Misrad Apnim. Mm -hmm. And then he's not granted the visa because he didn't do it with a lawyer. Yeah, it's a problem always. I just talked with my other one friend. Uh, uh, he's calling me and he say we are trying to special visa. I say, who's doing all the papers and everything? He say, uh, my employer's son's friend's wife, she is a lawyer. I say, which kind of lawyer? He's a criminal lawyer. He's a uh, the immigration lawyer. Which kind of lawyer? No, he is a lawyer. She is a lawyer. So uh, friends, uh, first of all, when you are going to apply, just check paper is well everything well without any mistake and if you have lawyer choose the right lawyer every lawyer are not the same some are practicing the legal uh, legal issue some are uh, practicing the immigration uh, issues so you have to choose the right lawyer so you will be not uh, rejected check all the facts check every the details everything is okay the your application your forms your paper or your uh, everything about what you need to attach uh, your employer condition, uh, the medical history, everything is perfect. You will not reject it. And if you have any problem to go to Jerusalem, you can come to Hakaren, meet the Yoshi. He will give you the free advice. Don't worry. Advice is a free and knowledge is a power. And also very important knowledge is power. The, the, the lawyer, Dana, that she's watching us. I appreciate Dana that you're watching us very much. And, and I appreciate that she's sitting at home spending from her time to sit and watch that we should give the right correct advice to you people and actually she's telling me that if you don't apply correctly for the special visa it could make your condition even worse because sometimes from the application until to get the visa it passed 90 days afterwards you cannot apply for another job and this is so important because if you're being rejected and you cannot apply afterwards for another job, the only chance is if you have a good reason to make a refugee visa, if not, you need to leave Israel. You need to leave Israel. So it's so important that the application should be correct 
and the lawyer should make the application for you and the lawyer should submit it for you because he knows afterwards how to fight with Mitzvah Pnim to approve you. And if he wrote it correctly and they, and they did not approve you, he has the right terminology to go and to tell the Mitzvah Pnim, but we quoted this and this and this, so why do you, why do you not uh, approve it? And this is what I'm saying over here. This is very, very important to know how and what you need to do. It's your future, it's your children, it's your family. It's, it's, it's so important, be focused. And this is what Raj, I'm telling Raj also all the time. Let's make the people strong. Let's bring them the correct solution. Special visa today, even though the agency says you don't have a chance, don't believe them, come to me and I'll show you how much you have a chance. Our lawyers at the Karen, the lawyers that work with, that we work with them and we refer people to them, they're very, very good. They had a very good decision in court to stop from several people. And today the court is just telling people they're making agreements in the court. The agreement is if you pull away your appeal, we will grant you another five months for this worker to stay in Israel. It's an agreement that's bad for you. And if you're standing in the court and you hear that agreement, tell your employer, don't do that. Don't agree on that. You want not to make a decision in the court. You want they should stop and they should grant you this visa. We know how to help you. We know how to tell this, this judge in Jerusalem that he's doing the wrong thing. And this is not the correct thing to take, tell the people, let's make an agreement. Don't make an agreement in court. Fight for your rights. You're entitled to get this visa. They write in these, in these special visas, they write, because the employer can find he's in a, in a central location and he can find another worker that's suitable for his employer, employee, his, fa his father, mm -hmm. so, or his mother. So don't, uh, don't accept these things. These reasons can be appealed. They can be pushed away. The judge is not God, okay? He's sitting over there to do his work, but the lawyers are, are here in this world to fight for you, to make legal terminologies that are in your favor. This is what a lawyer's job to do, not to take the money, not that somebody told me, yeah, there is a lawyer, he's willing to fight with me, he wants 20,000 shekel. 20,000 shekel? There is a lawyer who's willing to fight with me, he wants 5,000 shekel. It's too cheap. 20 is too much. There is a price. There is a real price, the middle price. You know why? Because the guy that comes to you, the lawyer that comes and he says, this is the price and I will grant you more time to stay in Israel, fighting the court system, that's the lawyer you need. And this is what Hakaren likes to hear from the lawyers that work with us. They come to you, they'll tell your employer what he needs to pay, and if you, he cannot pay, you should chip in with him together and pay it together with him. Today, we're the only, the lawyers that work with us, they're the only lawyers in Israel that were able to stop deportation and stop the court from making a decision. We have more than three months. We have no decision of deportation on several, wor several workers. They're still working in the family. And if any agency tells you that there's no chance to, 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 to prevent that it's not true there is a chance we know how we know what to do they know how to fight and we will fight for you and we are bringing a revolution over here this is a revolution the revolution is that we're nobody in israel was built a company that's here to bring you the solution no company in israel was built to say for the workers come to me if the agency is not good we will put them on their feet if the lawyer is not good we will do better for you and this is what we're doing we are protecting you on a daily basis. We're fighting for you and we're bringing great solutions, great solutions, more money for the people on the computation, more money in the deposit check and release. People know what's going on. You're controlling your style. You're controlling your life. You're controlling everything. You know, you can come to Akira and make, make medical insurance that day. You can know your visa status. You could know everything what's going on with the refugee visa, humanitarian visa. If you're sick and, you're, uh, and, and your work is finished, 
and you have a medical condition that's strong, we can make you a humanitarian visa. You don't need to go back to your country. We'll go to Mr. Adapnim and tell them we have a letter from the doctor that this person is sick. He's under treatment in Israel. He needs to get the treatment. We know how to do that. We go, send the lawyers. They know how to do the work. Great opportunities. Great situation. Good environment. Great friends. We help the Indians, the Sri Lanka, the Nepali. We're great friends with the with the with the Nepali embassy. We're great friends with the Filipino embassy. We're making connections with the with the, with the Sri Lanka embassy. We know everybody. We know how to approach people in the correct way. We have a great legal team that's giving us support with all the information. I monitor them. I see what they do. If something is not correct, I'm shouting at them for you. I'm shouting at them because I want the next person should come, should get better. And every day we try to do it better and better and better. And we will win the game. You know why? Because we're coming with truth. We're coming with emet. You know? Yeah. Emet. This is what you need to do. Give the people the truth. Sometimes even people don't like to listen to the truth. But what can you do? This is the truth. It's better to hear a truth and then to give somebody all the money that you work for. And then you lose the money. And then you do something that's not even that you did not get anything. Like all the story that happened that people giving five thousand mm -hmm. dollars to get special visa, and there's no special visa. They have duplicate paper. Mm -hmm. You remember yeah. story? How many people came to cry to us? They need to make now either refugee visa or they need to go back to their country. So, so truth is that uh, Frank, Mr. Dafni are not open uh, the office in the Ramzor, so no one can give you the visa on the Ramzor. Or on the street so use your mind where is your mind this is all the legal procedure it's the by misra dapnim or from the misra dapnim visa issue only in the misra dapnim not on the street not any agent there is no agent in the outside on the road so don't believe the people use your mind if you have any doubt come to hacker and meet to yossi take advice free advice knowledge is a power i see one time i was going street in Salome and I meet this guy I don't want to say and he has papers I say what do you do I take the papers from the people and we're fixing the problems I said but what kind of papers we know everything, everything. I know everything you know everything he knows all the papers and he knows everything and then the other day I hear that these people it's be careful a caregiver is a caregiver he's not a lawyer a refugee person guy that has granted to stay in Israel He's not a lawyer. He cannot bring you a solution. He could take you to a lawyer, tell the lawyer, do this and this, but the lawyer doesn't know the whole story because you don't know how to speak the language. We know how to speak your language. And if you don't understand, I'll explain it to you 10 times. I have the patience. We'll sit here and explain it to you 20 times. No problem. We'll bring somebody that speaks your language that understands what we're saying to make sure that everything is done correctly. You get agreements. Agreement. You have an agreement. Everything you do, with our lawyers, with the lawyers that work with us, you have an agreement. The agreement says what you're doing. Even if you do a refugee visa, the agreement says that you're doing a refugee visa, you're paying this and this, you're getting this and this, every service is written on a piece of paper. Everything. This is what I tell these lawyers. If I bring you somebody that comes to me that has a problem and he needs a lawyer, you will give him an agreement in English. He can read everything in that agreement he understands what kind of service you're giving him and he signs at the bottom of the line that he knows what he's getting and this is what's important the rest is all bullshit i don't believe in this i believe let's be honest let's be open everything should be black and white if there's no secrets his life is good if there is secrets you're losing this is what you need to know free advice is the most important thing and that's the one that makes you, gives you the energy and the power. Anything else is baloney. You know what means baloney? Today is the uh, Fourth of July. It's the 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 the, the Labor Day of um, the the Independence Day of the United States. I'm an American. I'm a proud American. I have a double citizen, also American and also Israeli. But my Israeli one, it's strong one. But I'm a proud American because America taught me a lot taught me service, taught me to respect people. America is a land of immigrants. America is a land that brought everybody in their doors with respect, with honor, 
and they built them, they gave them financial, they gave them social rights, they gave them social benefits, and this is what we have in Israel also. So we take the good things that we have, we implement them into our day-to-day -day services, and we give you solutions, and we help you, and we make you strong, and we take you to where you need to be. This right. is what's important. Okay, so uh, you see my last question. Uh, this is we are we are talking about the special visa. We are talking about the other way how to stay in Israel. We are talking about the calculation. We are talking about the airport deposit. We are talking about the working visa status. We are talking about the medical insurance. I have one more and last important questions. What if something happened uh, to the caregivers? to other criminal activities like uh, people some uh, friends uh, taking money and run away they don't want to give back money uh, what happened if uh, some uh, people are trouble in the other uh, criminal activities or uh, something happened wrong and they have no solution they have no idea what to do there is sure. a uh, uh, there is a uh, another service or advice or like that something first of all it's a great question because a lot of people are falling into problems with loans. This is like a, like cancer. These loan problems is cancer. It's crazy. You're going to get a loan from a, a company, a private person that gives loans. You don't make agreements. You don't take the papers to have a copy on what you signed. You don't know what you're signing. And you're being either a, lend, a loan, you're taking a loan, or you're being a guarantor for somebody else on their loan that they took. And what happens in the end? You don't know. And then suddenly when you wake up in the morning, there is a freeze on your account. And they, they call your employer and they tell him there is a hotel upon to come and take money from your employer from the salary. And what do you do? You don't know what to do. We have the solution. We know how to do it. We know how to handle it. We know how to take all your papers correctly. Make sure you bring the rest of the papers. We send it to the lawyer and we know how to fix it for you. The lawyer knows how to fix it for you. But prevent that way. You know how you prevent it? If you go sign a, a guarantee loan for somebody, tell them no problem. Who am I signing for? Where does it say the amount? And I want a copy of this. I will go ask advice from you. See? And tomorrow I will come back and sign the papers. Don't do it otherwise. Don't, please. Do me a favor. You're getting into trouble. You're making your family, you're putting them into jeopardy. Because they're going to take double and triple from the money. And you don't even know suddenly from 5000 it's 20000 Very quick. Boom. You don't even know. And the money's gone. And then you need to fight. And then your employer is going to get a phone call. And then they'll come to your employer's house and your employer tell you, get out of here. I don't want you anymore. I had a Sri Lankan guy come to my office today. He tells me, I need to leave my job. I want computation. I told him what happened. He said, I take a loan from another company and this loan became so big and they came to my employer and my employer told me, go. And you know how many years he's in Israel? In this employer, seven years. And you know what he needs to do now? Go home. And his whole security, all the money that he has is gone. And he's in deep trouble. Don't sign loans from people. Don't sign to be a guarantor unless you know what you're signing. Unless you know that you could pay the money for the, for the loan that they're taking. If you want to be a guarantor for somebody, no problem. You want to help a friend, you need to know he's taking 10000 You need to make sure you have that money. That if one day this guy doesn't pay, you come and you pay it. Because interest flies high yes very high they have no mercy no mercy they're here to make money on you and this is the key point all my advice is free bobby deepa bobby i see you're very involved i didn't see what you're writing we're gonna look uh, at it later uh, but, we are, friends we are coming to the question answer we just uh, finish all the points now we are coming on the later on uh, the, all the questions we are reading already so just to wait a five minutes, we just finish this topic and we are coming to the question answer section. Definitely. Yes. So this is one thing. Don't get into trouble. If you make a loan, make sure the paperwork is accordingly. Okay. This, 
you asked me another question before. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. Yes. Also criminal. Criminal activity. Criminal activity. Okay. If you hit your friend, he went to the police, and there is a criminal activity for you, no visa. Automatically, your visa will be revoked. I had a guy over here, a Filipino guy, that came to the office, and he's only two months in Israel, and he had a fight with somebody, and they went to the police. And they pulled him in on a criminal activity. And after two months, he lost his job. That's it. Boom. Finished. No more job in Israel. Go back home. So you need to understand something. Any involvement of criminal activity, run away. You see people fighting, run to the other direction. Because if they're going to try to put you involved, your visa is lost. Be very, very careful. Stay away from any criminal activity. You see the criminal activity, cross the street. Because then your visa is in jeopardy. Very important. Okay, you see, now we are going to question answer section. Uh, here many people, many caregivers asking us uh, many questions. So I am just uh, scrolling down or we have to scroll from here. You can go actually on the page. And look at the live ah, okay you can check here yeah i think so so people stay on the live video we are just uh, going to check all the all of your questions and we are trying to give answer to try to give answer to everyone so just uh, stay tuned ah this is the okay so we have to read comment yes okay we have many comments many here. many comments yes Okay, so Sushama, Sushma, Sushma, Sushma Anna Nayak. Mm, thank you so much. You see, because of your help, my friend got forty-three thousand from employer agency. Calculate forty thousand, thirty thousand from employer, but employer agreed to give only eleven thousand shekel by his lawyer suggestion. But by your one phone call, employer agreed to give thirty thousand shekel, and she got it. One sec. Thank you, thank you, thank you wow, so much. Wow, so much. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, because I push the lawyers so hard every day not to negotiate too much for you guys. I believe that you guys work so hard and, and you deserve your money. So if we see a reason sometimes that, uh, that uh, to, to, to negotiate, we try as much less to negotiate and to get you the most money. And I'm so happy from 43,000 shekel that they wanted to give you only 11,000. In the end, you got so much money, 30,000. It's amazing. I'm so happy to hear it. Subash. Subash Mudwadia. Yossi, if somebody passed more than three months after his employer passed away and he have a family who have a certain meukadim, 150% and a New did 100%. Can he get paper visa again? I mean, second time special visa. Second time special. It's so hard to get one time special visa. And the government doesn't want to give at all one time special visa. To get second time special visa, it's impossible. The law is not going to allow it. They don't allow it. And even though you get all the, the correct CUD, Meyuchad, and all the Shiruti Meyuchadim, even you have 188% and, and it's not possible to get second special visa. That's it. It's not possible. I'm sorry, but it's really not possible. John Lester, please shoot out. Yes, we are shoot out. We will shoot out and we will give you all the information possible. And this is what we do correct. Uh, what else do we have over here? We can see from here. I am scrolling down from the mobile, so we can see one by one a lot of lot of <laughs> comments. I see uh, Bavash, my friend. Bavash, thank you very much for supporting us. I hope solution. Uh, if it's possible, to uh, Joseph, Joseph Kunompora. It is possible to change B1 visa, caregiver visa to other jobs the, like a hotel job or other sector. Change to another visa. You cannot change. This is the visa you're granted while you're in Israel and you cannot change it. And uh, I'm sorry, but uh, this is uh, this is uh, it. 
Thank you, Bavash, for all these uh, great uh, comments in Hebrew and telling me how good I am. But uh, I want to tell you something. It's you're making me a little bit shy because I'm a very modest person. And, uh, and, and I really love my job. The reason why I really love my job is because I'm making a change. And this is so much fun for me to give solutions to people. And, uh, and you know, we're really making a great change for the people, making them stronger. And uh, so we spoke about special visa. Yes, uh, Dolly, Bhavesh, Kaneria, I hope you will get your information during the, our question answer with Yoshi. Uh, this is the best of the video that we can do. So I'm sorry if okay. the video is not so clear. Why we get salary 4,200 area three. So Priscilla, it's not correct that salary, you need to get more money. And uh, and come to our Karen when you finish working, and we'll try to talk to you. We'll try to give you the, the correct computation that you could get more money. Uh, you deserve minimum in area three four thousand five hundred and fifty shekel, not not less. How we can check the money deposit currently? Depositing currently, you can come to our Karen, and we can do it for you. We can send a letter through the lawyer to uh, to the airport. And we can get the answer for you. What uh, Fernandez Daniel is asking, what is the difference between refugee visa and humanitarian visa? There is an option after first special visa on your visit, our home country. So first of all, the difference between refugee visa is you, you it's refugee visa. It's also a humanitarian visa. But it's called refugee because you're asking the government to give you a status of a refugee to protect you from not going back to your country. Humanitarian visa people, uh, we call it for people that have humanitarian issues, uh, like, like they're sick and they cannot go back to their country and they need a, a, a protection from the government. So, uh, so humanitarian visa is uh, if you're sick, you need to continue having treatments for the future. You have a doctor that sends all these papers and tells you that you need these treatments. You come to us, we can make a request for, for uh, uh, we could uh, have uh, the lawyers that we work with uh, to, to review the paperwork and give you an option uh, to request these papers. If you are, uh, uh, have some mental illness or you're taking medication and it's not good for you to fly on a plane or stuff like that, you can be granted the protection from the court to stay in Israel. So Fernandez, I hope I answered your question. Can you change refugee visa to humanitarian? No, once you go to refugee visa, the only way you can change is to a friendship visa. Sometimes you can change to humanitarian if the case is very strong. Yes, you can. We need to see the case. Everything is case to case uh, study. Uh, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Sarah Kulung and, uh, and Regina de Souza. And uh, hi, everybody. Uh, cheering, uh, Fenessa. Fenasa, thank you very much, sir, giving us important information. This is what we're here for, and we're implementing that in every day of our life. We need to give you the information. We need to make you strong. You can come to us and get the services as well. Truly appreciate Yossi, indeed, are doing a great job for giving us good legal solutions. Keep up the good work. You're welcome. From, who's that? Vivek Lama. Vivek Lama. Sarah Kulang. Thank you so Thank much for good advice and suggestions. Oh, we have the best suggestions. We already take the, this one, yes. this answer. Center good you. Thank you. Yossi, how can I reach your office? May I have oh, your address? Yes, yes, definitely. We will add uh, on the Facebook. You have all the information, how to reach us, how to get to us, come to the office. You could send me a WhatsApp to my cell phone number. Everybody knows my number. I have no secrets from anybody. So and, oh. send a message and then uh, we will definitely answer this to you. Uh, actually, which topic going on to do from there? I don't understand that question, but if you have any questions that I did not answer, you could send me all the time. What happened to the... No, no, it just click the camera. Oh. Okay. 
If it's denied, apply, it's possible, she, he, find another employer. If 90 days passed in the term of the denial, it's still a very smart agreement that we can bring to the, to the, to the uh, uh, judge. So uh, I would suggest that if you're denied on your special visa and your employer fired you and told you, listen, you're denied, I don't want you to work for me, try to find another employer immediately come to us, we'll make a request, we'll say that the 90 days passed because you were waiting, I think we can try, this is a legal question, I don't want to answer that, but Sheila, Banau, Romas, Bacolor, please come to my office, I want to check this out with the lawyer, and I want to give you a correct answer, it's a great question, it's a question that needs to get a very serious post out there, and we need to talk about it. I love that question because today somebody came to me and we did not give him an answer yet. This is one question that the lawyer is waiting to answer to me because there is a very large agreement on, uh, uh, disagreement with the Misrada Pneem and the court. What is the 90 days? When do they start? So it's something that, that we, we still need to clear and we will clear it in a post in a couple of days. How long does it take if special visa be granted so it depends i see that between three to five months but if it's being denied also it's three to five months it's a big problem we need to get into it a little bit more we need to get a good solution from the court we're working on that we're gonna get there this is gonna be something that we're gonna get there you are talking for us we know you thank you I want a job in Israel. Sorry, I cannot get you jobs in Israel. I don't bring people to Israel. Uh, Hakaren deals with people, enough problems in Israel. Start bringing people from overseas, it's very hard. But we're bringing professionals, bankers. Uh, we're bringing some serious uh, people that, that they come through an organized system and they want to come to Israel. We're actually very good at that and we're good at the, uh, bringing that information and we're helping. Uh, so anybody that wants a job from Israel, you have the wrong address. I'm not here to help you, but if you're working for a bank or for a high tech company or for a, and, and you, or you, you have, there is a restaurant guy that's looking to bring somebody in and, and these kind of things, it's much easier for caregiving. It's controlled by the agencies, unfortunately. So we don't have any control over there and we try to stay away from that because there is too much corruption over there. Uh, Susma Anna, thank you so much, Yossi, Karen Yossi, because of help. Oh, this, we, we spoke we about this, spoken. yeah? We saw this. If someone we also we already spoke talked about, about. so I think we answered most of the answer, most of the questions. I think uh, this we answered also, right? Ah, okay. How to check my employer is 188 percent in Bituach Lomi. Uh, keep changing weekly hours less. Employer fully disabled. Disabled. This is a problem, the Bituach Lomi with the Vada, if the 188% and these things, they change. And, you know, this is not something that we're very familiar with, but if you have a specific question and you want some help, we will definitely look into it and try to bring you the solution. So uh, we have some lawyers that we know that are very professional in Bituach Lomi, that we trust their decision. We know that they charge you the correct fee and we can bring you a solution over there so this is something that we will work on uh, how much we'll get from my employer for nine years oh that can be a lot of money close to 100,000 shekel it's a private job it's a private job it's even better make sure he has money this guy because he needs to pay you a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, what's his name Naugan Karavadra Naugan Naugan brother come to the office in Hakaran you will get the best computation much more money than anybody else would give you, definitely. I enjoy watching, I am satisfied of your sharing experience and looking forward to come and uh, selfies with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> John Lester, God bless you, brother. Vicky Lama, 
truly appreciate you, Yossi. You indeed are. Where's all the compliments that Rajan said? Come on, guys. He was the he was the mastermind behind all this to, to bring you guys the solution. I appreciate it. I'm giving you the the compliment today. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Yossi. I see you so much. Your help, really great. You and my question. I am 12 years in Israel, married last year in India. I want to bring her to work in Israel. Is it possible? Yossi, please help me. First of all, there is a law that you cannot bring any family members of caregivers in Israel. It's not possible to bring a family member to work in Israel. So this is one thing that you cannot do. Uh, if uh, you have a way to bring her here, God bless you. I cannot help you. I really love to help you, but this is a very big problem. Uh, hi, sir. Just want to ask. My friend is working now and she is in special visa for more than a year now. My question, if she will leave the job because someone wants her to give work, if she leaves her job in a special visa, she, she cannot get another job. Don't leave your job. Even though it's very, very hard, special visa, you cannot leave the job. You must stay in that job. This is the job that you got. You got the protection. You got the, you got, you got the, uh, Misrada Pnim offered you a visa that you granted, and this is what you can get. It's not clear. It's not good. No, it's a delay. If you see in the computer, ah. other account, it will be delay. Uh, just a moment. Naugan uh, Karavadra, uh, this is not uh, Karmeli, this is uh, uh, Yossi Kron. Yossi. It's from Hakaren. We're Hakaren company, and we appreciate it very much, Mr. Naugan. Yeah, it's, uh, I think all the questions. Okay, is we finished. answered all the questions. We're very happy to, to bring you more solutions, and uh, we are here for you, brothers and sisters. My name is Yossi Kron. And I'm from Hakaren Company. We're in the Tachana Merkazi Tel Aviv every single day to bring you the best solutions. Our number, telephone number, will be right over here now. We will put the number and you can call us anytime. This is the number of the office. Office number. And my direct number. We will be ending this live. It's a very successful live. Many, many people were watching this. And we will be... Uh, we will come back again with a new topic, new questions. And people stay tuned. We will start uh, very soon in the future, uh, new live. So be connected with the, our page, Hakaren. We connected uh, my group. Indian care, caregivers in Israel. AJ Kuti, Ajay, Ajay Kuti, Namaste. Namaste, Namaste. Ajay, 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 I know him. He's a great guy now. Namaste, Ajay. Thank you. Okay, brothers. So, friends, we are closing now here. The session is over. We will uh, promise to you to, we will come back very soon again. Bought together. I have a lot of questions. You see, I will not leave you. I will come back again. <laughs> Every time you come, I appreciate it. I want to tell you something over here. It's very, very important. We make friends. At Akaren, we're making friends. We're not just coming, people are coming as a caregiver to get information. We're making friends. You know why? Because when you feel comfortable with somebody, you can open up and bring your problem. So if you feel like a friend to me, and you feel like you come to me with the big problem that you have, automatically your problem will be small and your solution will be great. And this is what I want to do. This is my goal. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. So bye-bye. See you Thank next you time. Bye-bye.